We've talked about friction and we've seen how we can calculate how much force it takes to push a box along the floor or push a book along the table. But for most practical technological applications, we never push things sliding along the floor. We use wheels. Cars have wheels, bicycles have wheels, even suitcases have wheels these days. So what's the physics of moving something with a wheel along? Now you might think this is just another form of sliding, but if you look in detail at how the wheel turns as it rolls along, it's actually not sliding along the ground. The bit of the wheel that's in contact with the ground just moves up and down. Here I've taken a video footage of my car driving along, and I've marked with the little red stars a position of a particular point on the rim of a wheel. And you can see it's not sliding along the ground, it moves down and it moves up. But when it's in contact with the ground, it's at rest, it's stationary. Now when you're driving a car or riding a bicycle, most of the time, this is exactly how you want it. You don't want the bottom of your wheel to be skidding across the road, sliding. You want it just to roll up and roll down. That's because it gives you more control over where the car's going. Sometimes, unfortunately, you do start skidding, particularly when you're on black ice or doing burnouts. And usually this means you lose a lot of control over where your car's going, so you don't want that. Here's a movie I found on YouTube showing what happens when your car starts sliding across the road rather than driving on it. You can see that the car is moving but the wheels are not turning. And you'll also see that the drivers have lost any control of which direction their car is moving. Generally not a good idea to keep uh, the wheel sliding, you want it to be rolling. Now, if your wheel is not sliding along the floor but just rotating, then there's no friction. But that seems a bit odd because we know it takes energy to push a car or wheel a bag along. It's not zero energy. It's not as much as if it didn't have wheels. You actually, push the whole thing along the ground, overcoming friction. But it's still not nothing. So there's still some sort of force needed to move things. This is called rolling resistance. Where does it come from? Well, you might think that. For example, even though the wheel is not sliding on the ground, presumably where it meets the car it's sliding, but normally for most wheels you've got ball bearings there that rotate as well. So again, there's nothing actually sliding along each other. In practice, the main reason why it takes energy to rotate wheels is because the wheels deform a bit, and the ground underneath them deforms a bit. It's suspending, it's deformation. The wheels, not if it was just hanging in the air, would be a perfect sub, but when it's pressing on the ground, the bottom's a bit flattened, and as it rolls, that flattened bit has to move around, and that takes energy. The way we model this is actually very similar to the way we model normal friction. We assume that there's a force, a rolling resistance force, which is equal to a coefficient of rolling resistance times the normal force. The only difference is this coefficient of rolling resistance is usually much less than the normal coefficient of friction because wheels are good, that's why we have wheels. How good they are depends on what sort of surface you're running on. If you're trying to drive an underinflated tyre over sand, it can be quite high, like 0.3, almost the same as a friction. That's why it's hard to cycle through on a beach. If, on the other hand, it's a very hard steel wheel on a railway track, then it's not going to bend very much, and the coefficient of running resistance can be you know, 0.001 or even smaller, which is why trains are so efficient. One slightly tricky thing to think about with cars and general wheels. There is friction, usually static friction, uh, because the bottom of the wheel is not sliding across the ground. And that friction, while it's not what makes it hard to push a car, is still really important. But the direction it points in is not can be any direction really. For example, if you're trying to turn a corner, you're accelerating into the corner, so this friction will be pointing sideways. If a car is speeding up, the friction is actually pointing forward. The engine is trying to make the wheel, the bottom of the wheel go backwards and friction is resisting it. If, on the other hand, your car is slowing down, in this case, friction is going to point backwards. Here, for instance, the car is accelerating. This means the car engine is trying to turn the wheel so the bottom goes backwards, but the friction is resisting it, so friction is actually pushing forwards. While here the car is slowing down, the brakes are trying to stop the wheels turning, but the car still wants to keep moving because of momentum. So in fact, the friction force in this case points backwards. So in all these cases, the sensible thing to do is look at what's happening. Is the car getting faster, slower, moving sideways? What acceleration do we need to produce this? And that's the direction the friction is going to be travelling in.